everyone around me, from my friends to my family members, they always kept telling me, oh, gee, you're too young. Don't go out and become an entrepreneur. Uh, hold off on it. Go to school first. Get some experience under your belt. Do it when you're 25, 26. And I've always been super impatient. So at that age, I was like, oh, no, these guys are all crazy. Like, I'm going to get it done anyways. And then when I got this big rejection thrown in my face, it was like a big like reality check. And it almost completely deterred me from ever pursuing my entrepreneurial career as a whole. And pretty much like I stopped on my business activities and stuff like that for a few weeks. But uh, something just kept itching inside of me. I was just like, man, I can't let it end like this. And I just kind of like gained a little bit more self-confidence and I kind of just turned what was my perceived like liability into an asset. It was just like a mind shift within me. And that like really made a difference. Like I started telling myself, yeah, I'm young. People are going to know that I'm young. I can't hide that fact. So let me just own it. Let me just show people why I'm a better candidate because I'm young than maybe someone who's a decade older than me or something like that. But yeah, that's one of the first rejections that I faced that almost like completely stopped my entrepreneurial career right in its tracks. So I think um, one of the biggest things that I learned was that my own confidence kind of like exudes into the world. So the thoughts that I think and the things that I believe, if I think those things myself, then somehow it's going to be easier for someone else to believe those things. So it just became a big mindset mindset shift for me where I was like, okay, I need to believe what I want to put out into the world. And if I believe it myself, then other people will believe it. Whether it's in life, in business, in anything it is, rejection is going to happen, but it's not the end of the world. It feels like it in that moment. But as time goes by, it's really not that bad. And for me, I was like, okay, one person thought I was a, a little kid. But there's millions, if not billions of other businesses that I could reach out to and try and sell them to. And I was like, if I'm just going to base my entire entrepreneurial career off one person, I, didn't, I just didn't feel like that was a fair shake for myself. I really learned that entrepreneurship was something that meant a lot to me and something I really wanted to do because like growing up, I always had different things, you know, that I was super excited for a week, right? Like when I was like, 12 years old, I brought a, bought a drum set and I pounded away at those drums for a day. And then after that, I never touched it again. But the fact that this entrepreneurship thing like kept itching at me after I'd gone through all this rejection and almost like betray entrepreneurship, had almost betrayed me at this point. The fact that I still wanted to do it again just meant like this was something I was really passionate about and something that meant a lot to me. So the first process that I really always take with any business is figure out what the core value of your business is pretty much like the raw, raw, raw point of your business, right? And only build that. So no extra features, nothing like that. Just ask yourself, if I'm solving a problem, what is the bare minimum problem that I'm solving and how can I create that in its most basic form? Go after the things that you're really passionate about and the things that you know a lot about uh, because the learning curve is gonna be a lot less and when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's literally like getting married. So if you end up getting married with someone you don't necessarily like, then it's gonna be really tough to maintain a relationship for decades. And the same thing goes with your business. The first few months may seem great, but if you don't like what you do, you're really gonna to struggle to work those extra hours that you need to be successful or to work without getting paid, as many of us have to do. But if you don't look at it as work, it's a piece of cake. So I think like anytime I have a failure, I kind of have a period of reflection. Um, I, don't, I don't like to just fail and get right back up on the horse right away. I always wanna take something away from my last failure so that the next time I go back at it, I'm a little bit smarter, a little bit better, a little bit stronger, a little bit something, right? Some kind of improvement. So I think I was just kind of going through a reflection period of like what went wrong with this business? Why did it fail? and I just kind of started retracing my steps. So just really starting from day one, from the conception of the idea all the way till the launch. And I just started thinking about who I was and I really was unhappy about the person that I was at that time, just because I was like, okay, you know what? I was like very cocky about this. I was very arrogant. Like the signs were there, the warning signs were there. I ignored them. I just kind of let the early successes kind of get to my head. And just being, I think being able to learn that lesson at that age, at like 21, 22 was really good for me. I think that's why I call it a very humbling experience because if I didn't learn it then, maybe even today, you know, I'd kind of still be that cocky and arrogant person that thought like everything I touch is going to turn into gold and all that kind of stuff. So I think for that reason, it was really um, great that I'd reflected on it and kind of opened my eyes and saw that, okay, you know what? I need to humble myself. There's no such thing as being like invincible in entrepreneurship. You're going to have successes. You're going to have failures. You just got to own each of those and uh, kind of move from there. So my one of my favorite questions is, why do you want to create this idea? And usually if people tell me like, oh, I just want to make a lot of money or it's a very lucrative opportunity or something along those lines, it's usually a turnoff for me. I'm really looking for a deeper why. Like I'm starting this company because my grandma went through XYZ problem and I really need to find a solution. Something that really comes from the heart, something that's driven by passion, something that's driven 
driven by like a hobby or something they did in the past. So understanding the why and really buying into the person is key, key, key for me uh, before I make an investment into a company. When I was about like 20 years old, I had a ton of people telling me like, oh my God, it's so cool that you're pursuing your dreams and you're doing it so young. I wish I could do that. And at some point, I just got really surprised to hear so many people telling me that where I was like, okay, I need to go out and I need to ask a bunch of people this question. Like, does everyone have dreams and is everyone really not pursuing their dreams? So I went out and I just surveyed a bunch of people, started creating these focus groups over and under 25 uh, years old. And I started asking everyone, do you have a dream first? Number two, are you pursuing it? And three, if not, why not? And pretty much the results I got from it was crazy. But yeah, it was just something in my mind that uh, really just kind of ticked away when I got all these questions. I just became very curious and I needed the answer. I always think this and it's probably selfish to think this, but I always wish that I kind of started even younger, right? So like instead of 17, like what could have happened if I would have started at 13 or 12? Because I kind of think I always had this entrepreneurial spirit and I would have like little random ideas and stuff. And then I would just kind of like shy away from them when I was younger. So I think my biggest advice uh, for my younger self and just for people in general is that if you have something that you want to do, just go out there and do it. There is no substitute for taking action. Um, Action is the only way that you can really figure out whether something is for you, whether you're going to achieve success and you just don't want to live a life of regret. So going back to my younger self, like I would tell my younger self to try more things when I was younger, whether it's entrepreneur related or not. If there was something I wanted to do, a hobby I wanted to pursue, whatever it was, just go out there and do it and see where it takes you.